this year is all about simple, sustainable style systems. It's not about buying more and consuming more. It's really around optimizing everything that you already own and pieces that are already in your closet and just breathing new life into things and getting intentional and my buzzword of the year, methodical around the decisions that you're making so that you feel freaking amazing. I've been leaning into this idea of how we don't do things just to do things. We don't do things for the pure pleasure of doing things. And a lot of us hold ourselves back from that. And I think styles are really good examples. Oh, what's up, Style Nation? I am super excited that you are here and we are back with another Styled for Life episode. How are things going? I am super excited that you're here. I'm super excited to just be stepping out with this new confident energy that I have going on these days. And I can't wait to let it drip all over you and share this goodness so we can lift each other up. So thanks for being here on the show today. If you're new, oh, welcome. This is a podcast all around how to tap into the psychology of your style to amplify your mood, be more yourself, and just grow a better, stronger, faster, whatever your word is of the year, business, so that you can live out your wildest dreams. All right. So we're like a week in to 2024. I hope your 2024 is going amazing. I I'm excited. I mean, I'm always excited. And this is why New Year's is really interesting time of year for me because I know that you're like me and you're driven female entrepreneur. And we always have goals, right? Like, do you not always have a goal? So like New Year's to me, it's kind of interesting energy because everyone has these big goals and this big energy. And while I love a fresh start and I love the energy that comes with starting over and really kind of creating that clean slate, whether it's the new year, the new moon, a new month, a new week, whatever that is, I always just have to remind myself, and I just like to share this, is that January, there's a lot of hype around it and it's still the dead of winter. So if you're not off to the ground running yet, that's cool you'll get there, right? Like give yourself the grace that you need right now. Sometimes I can really feel like we're going up against like that true mother nature energy because I don't know about where you live, but here in the States on the East Coast, it's cold and it has been dreary for like weeks on end. Anyways, let's dive into today's show because you're not here to talk about the weather. You're not here to talk about surface level stuff. You're here to get that confidence, baby. One joke, one outfit at a time, right, ladies? All right. So I'm excited about today's guest. And in full transparency, today wasn't scheduled to be a guest episode. But I don't know about you, but I think my technology in my house, my microphone, my Google, my podcast, my laptop, I'll say, guess what? You're going to edge into 2024 slowly. And what you thought you had planned is not happening. So I've actually had to switch around the episodes just a week. So it's all good. And I've had to record this five times. (laughs) Craziness. But hey, that's what it's all about. And that's why we're here, right? So I am excited though about this week's episode. And I am totally trusting that this is what you need and that this is what we are actually supposed to talk about this week as we dive into like the first full week of 2024. So sometimes you just have to be like, okay, I see you. This is actually what I'm supposed to be talking about. Not the thing that I thought I was supposed to be talking about. And I kind of love it. Anyways, this week on the podcast, I have Holly Marie Haynes. You might know her from Crush the Rush podcast, or if you follow me on Instagram, her and I have connected and shared each other's content there over and over because she's a business baddie. She's a business strategist who loves, who loves a good plan, who loves a flow chart, who loves to be hyper-organized because it makes things easier and simpler, right? Less decision fatigue. So I brought Holly on the podcast to share 
her magnificence, brilliance around how she creates really easy to execute strategies, her anti-social strategy that she uses to grow her audience and to build her business. And more importantly, I want her to break down her CEO week because she has this process that she uses every week in her business called her CEO week, where she's designated certain days of the week to doing certain activities. And I was like, oh, I love this because I think we should create some CEO week outfits to match this energy. Like I said, this podcast is all around the psychology of our clothing, how it makes us feel, what it represents for how we, what we value and who we are in this world. And what better way to collaborate the CEO week and the task and the energy that we're creating with what we're wearing. So we're going to dive into today to Holly's strategy. And then her and I have collabed to come together to offer this CEO week outfit as a supplement styled by yours truly to complement this strategy. So I am dropping it here first on my podcast, and then we will be collaborating over in her community next month because this year is all about simple, sustainable style systems. It's not about buying more and consuming more. It's really around optimizing everything that you already own and pieces that are already in your closet and just breathing new life into things and getting intentional and my buzzword of the year, methodical around the decisions that you're making so that you feel freaking amazing. This is something that you're going to hear me talk about a lot. I've been leaning into this idea of how we don't do things just to do things. We don't do things for the pure pleasure of doing things. And a lot of us hold ourselves back from that. And I think style is a really good example of one of those things. This conversation actually came out when I was talking to somebody about getting a massage. They were like, I'm not sure what the health benefits are other than it feels good in the moment. And I was like, regardless if it has long lasting health benefits, what's not valid about feeling good in the moment? And I think that a striving, amazing, um, I'm gonna just use the word hardworking, female entrepreneurs, we're really good at not letting ourselves just do something because it feels good in the moment. And I think that's why a lot of us don't get dressed because we're like, no one's going to see me anyway. So I want to really shift into lighting candles and listening to music and dancing just to fucking feel good. And that obviously includes how to get dressed. So dive into today's episode with Holly. She is going to really break down some simple business strategies. She's going to break down her CEO week for you, the actions that she takes, the things that we do. And we're going to talk a little bit about the energy that she's creating and how she dresses for those. And when you tap into the show notes, you will be able to find the access to the CEO week outfits. All right, lady, I hope you enjoy and lots of good stuff is going to be coming up this year. So make sure you stay tuned and subscribe to the podcast. Some really exciting stuff is going to be happening inside the sales squad in February that you don't want to miss actually all month long, but that's the big one year birthday. And if you find this episode inspiring and you know another business baddie that really wants to grow her business with you, share it with her. It's the most amazing thing you could do to help support the podcast. All right. Enjoy today's episode with Holly Marie Haynes, and I will see you on the other side. Holly, 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 welcome to the show. I'm super excited that you're here. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. I'm obsessed with your style and your podcast, and it's such an honor to be a guest. Thank you. I feel the same way. I was like, oh my God, I'm actually going to have someone on the podcast who I love their podcast. And I don't know about you, but like as a podcaster, it makes me get really intentional about what podcasts I actually listen to. And yours is so brilliant. So I'm super excited to share your juice and your brain on the show today. Yay. I'm excited. Thank you. So Holly Haynes, for anyone who doesn't know that's new to her, well, please don't be new to her after this episode because she's amazing and she's brilliant, is a business strategist, host of the Crush Rush podcast, and she makes business easy. Like that's all it is for me is the two words that I've had on repeat since I started my business is ease and fun. 
Mm-hmm. And I feel like you just truly embody that. Hence why I like fangirl over your podcast and like make sure if I have time to listen that I'm listening. Thank you. Yeah. I always like to say that I just, well, I teach strategy. I'm a business strategist, which is not like a super fun word, but I like to make it easy and simple because people hear strategy and they like freak out and they're like, oh, I'm not a business person. I don't, um, you know, I don't know all the things, but you do. And strategy can be really easy and simple. And whether or not you have your own business or not, there are, there's, you know, life can actually be easier. We tend to overcomplicate it. Damn, could that, could nothing be more true? Right. (laughs) That's something I've really been learning about myself over these last three years as a business owner is like, I was telling someone like you can't hide behind like corporate or a team or your boss or like any of these things anymore. It's like, damn, I overcomplicate things way more than I need to. Right. Yeah. We get in our head and we think it has to be 10 times more than it needs to be. And we just have to keep it simple. That's like my life theme. Like, let's just keep it easy and simple. Awesome. So what makes you so damn cool, Holly? Like, how did you get to this point right now? I want to dive into what I think is like the bread and butter of your business is this CEO week. Like we're joking about how much we love themes But for anyone who's new to you, can you just give them that super quick, cute, Holly's amazing backstory? So that Yeah. Well, I'm glad you think I'm cool. Sometimes I don't feel like my story is very cool. Uh, But I'm Holly Haynes. I live in Columbus, Ohio. I have twin daughters who just turned 10, which is crazy to me. Um, I started my business in January of 2020. And this is like the really interesting part of the story because I am about to be 45. And I started this business at, I don't know, 41, right? Uh, I can't even do math. But the whole point is, is I haven't had a 22-year corporate strategy career behind the scenes. So I thought that I was like in it to win it in the corporate world. For me, like a lot of times I'll interview different guests on our podcast. And I'm like, oh yeah, I have a degree in entrepreneurship. And I'm like, what? Like that was- <laughs> even in an option when I was in college. I didn't even know what the word was. So this is like a total, I had no idea that this was actually going to be my life kind of thing. I dabbled in different leadership roles in my corporate career and just honestly had this moment one day where I was like, Hey, you know, I've got the the office, the team, I can shut the door. Like I have some decent vacation. And, but I was like, I don't know if I want to do this for the next 10 years. Like something just felt off and I couldn't like put my finger on what it was. And I had for so long done all the things that I was supposed to do. Like I went to college, I have like five degrees. I did, I took all the steps and then I got there and I was like, this is not really what I thought it would be. And it wasn't bad. I was very lucky that I liked my job. Like it wasn't awful. Um, It supported our family, but I was like, do I want, like, is this what I really want to do? Like I just had this moment. Um, so I started kind of backwards and I was like, well, I'll just do some more things that are more meaningful inside my corporate job. So I like started some women's leadership groups and started mentoring more. And I really loved that piece of it because I felt like I was actually helping somebody and making a difference as opposed to like sitting in a boardroom and just making PowerPoints or whatever the the (laughs) activity was, right? Um, so in January of 2020, I was like, you know what, I'm going to hire a coach and I'm going to try to do this on my own just for fun. We're just going to see what happens. I didn't know the pandemic was going to hit. I didn't know it was going to turn into this, but I did hire somebody before I had a business. So that's point two of the story. And I said, show me exactly what I need to do to make something of this, knowing that I wanted to teach female business owners, like how to grow a business, which is what I was doing in my full-time job and had done for a really long time, but it was for large corporations and like helping women just felt more aligned. Uh, But then the pandemic hit, which we didn't know was going to happen. And at the same time, I came out with a podcast. So the very first step in my business was, I'm just going to create this community where I can teach and I can serve, and then we'll see what comes out of it. Because again, I didn't think that I would actually like make a ton of money doing this. I wasn't quite sure. But long story short, because I was working full-time, because the pandemic hit, at the time my twins were in kindergarten, we're homeschooling, there's all these things going on. Like People paid attention because I was sharing like how we were getting through the day, how we were keeping things simple, how I still wanted to grow this business, even though the world was shutting down. 
And the podcast ended up just taking off. Um, And I know when people say that, they're like, well, how does that actually happen? Which I can share if you want, but that's kind of how we got to where we are today is I really poured all of my energy into being super organic and sharing our story and what I was doing behind the scenes. And if you listen to the podcast, you hear a lot of that now of like, this is what's actually happening behind the scenes. This is what I'm learning. And so I've just sort of built uh, our business from that. I love that. Maybe I think your story is so cool because it's super similar to my story. And Mm -hmm. I didn't know the one thing we had in common is hiring. I was in a business mastermind way before I had a business. I was like, I want to launch a podcast and I have climbed this corporate career. I've checked every fucking box that anyone has put in front of me. And I used to come in the same closet. I didn't have lipstick wallpaper and I would cry (laughs) because this can't be it. Yeah. I don't know. It was just this feeling and everyone wants this like, well, what's the thing? And I was like, well, I had a feeling. And then I just yeah. decided to be consistent uh, with following through with that. No, that's powerful. So I had to wait until like I got reorged out of my company <laughs> a year into the pandemic to take some action. So it's funny because I was in that business mastermind for a whole year. And then I was like, oh, hey, guys, I'm, I'm ready to show up. Yeah. <laughs> that it's November 2020. <laughs> Right. I don't know. It's just interesting when you're put in situations like how it can change you depending on what the situation is. Yes. Yes. So I love this so much. Um, and that's like, just even listening to you talk, maybe it's just your voice. Like, I feel like you just like, and this is just so easy. And you want to know how to make your podcast? I'll just <laughs> tell you, like, just do Well, this. I will tell you. <laughs> And I, I want to know, and I'm sure someone listening wants to know, but I also want to dig into your CEO week. And I yeah. want to share a little bit of the backstory just for the lady that's listening. Is like I said, I love Holly, Holly's podcast. And I listen to it all the time because it's super simple. It's to the point. It's fun and easy. And we just get things done. So I'm sure you advertises is more more than just this one time but i can't i think it was at the end of the summer or september ish i can't remember um the ceo week you were talking about it and i was like i want to listen to this and there was just these little bite-sized episodes over like how to set up your week mm-hmm. you want to start your business like on a part-time and i was like jamming out and i was like i love themed days and i love yeah. themed weeks and it really kind of helped me get cleaned up in spaces where i had kind of loose boundaries around what i was doing on certain days and I was like, Holly, let's get on a podcast. And you're like, okay. And then when there was meditating, I was like, oh my God, I have an idea. I was like, I want to do outfit formulas based on your theme CEO days. Yes. Let's do this, Holly. Can you walk us through like your CEO week? And I kind of want to take each day and bring yeah. it a little bit. Oh, yeah. Because I think the thing that I want to really showcase people is you have the themes. And I want to talk a little bit about like, who are you on those days? What energy are you channeling? Like what part of Holly is showing up and what does Holly yeah. need to believe about herself to like do those things? Cause I love to take those energies, those values, those beliefs and marry them with our outfits and our outfit formulas. Yeah. Well, the reason why you and I get along so well is I'm obsessed with clothing. Um, like I love shopping, but also I like to do it in a very simple way where I actually wear what I have. Um, and so I follow a super simple formula that you do as well. And I usually have a capsule wardrobe for each season where I'm pulling like strategic pieces and this goes back to CEO week, but I found like once we were home during the pandemic and like our schedules were just like, I don't even know, like I really struggled with what do I do each day? How do I show up? Like, is it okay to wear sweatpants every day? And I joke, like at first I was really excited to wear sweatpants because I was like, man, I earned this. Like, I don't have to wear, (laughs) like I'm wearing sweatpants every day, but then, you know, you want to feel good and you want to show up confidently, even if it is zoom and not leaving your house. So whether or not you have your own business or not, the whole concept of CEO week is that you're in charge of your schedule. Mm-hmm. I always say, if you can run your schedule, you can run your life. And every single time I coach anyone, my very first question is, what does your schedule look like? Because if you're just going through the motions and you're not actually intentional about what you're doing, you're not actually doing the things that you think that you're doing. So for me, I was like, okay, I'm working full time. My kids are home. I'm trying to start this business. Like I have to get ahead of my schedule or I'm going to run myself into the ground 
and I'm not going to have anything left, which is not what we want. And so I came up with this concept. It's really twofold. It's one, I set themes for each day, which we'll get into. But two, I also set specific business hours to work on my business. Now, if you don't have a business, this whole concept is you're actually setting aside time to do the things that you want to do. So it's very intentionally saying, hey, let's just, we're geeking out about podcasts. I want to start a podcast. So I'm going to set aside a time every Friday where I'm going to spend an hour researching what the heck I need to do to start a podcast. Like we're just being really intentional with it. But also I had to do that because I knew that I didn't have a lot of time to build my business. I obviously was working and, you know, the the days go by fast. So I had to be super intentional about what time am I waking up? What am I doing when I wake up? I don't want to spend five hours trying to figure out what I'm doing during the day when I only, when I don't have five hours to figure that out. (laughs) Right. So I was like, this is just like, how, Holly, how do you get this to work? And so it's really, really important if you're listening that one, you just take some time to set aside, like, what are your goals? We'll use business as an example, but let's pretend that you want to start a business, but also making sure that you're setting aside the time to figure out what those goals are. So that's step one. Step two is I created themes for each day because I'm a morning person, but I don't want to think in the morning. I just want to get it done so that I can get on with my day. And the themes really helped me figure out what to focus on. So I like to bookmark my weeks with what I call CEO days. It doesn't have to be a full day. It could literally be an hour and that's enough. The theory being whatever your goal is, in this case, it was building a business. I had eight to 10 hours a week to do it. So I had to figure out how was I going to use that time? So Mondays were what I called CEO days. In my corporate job, I would very strategically move things away from Monday because I don't know if you're like me, you get like the Sunday scaries. Yeah. You're like, oh man, I have so much happening this week. And then the weekend starts to be stressful. And so I would move everything off of Monday so that I actually had time on Monday to think about what I truly needed to do, or I could use it as a catch up day. It could be an hour, it could be four hours, but Mondays are typically my CEO days. If I'm being honest, my outfit on Mondays is probably not an outfit. It's like, although I will say I've been leaning into this like more like uh, leggings, cute hat, super cute sneakers kind of thing, like put together, but it's very like relaxing. I have the day to do what I need to do. So Mondays when I was working full time, it's basically six, seven in the morning. It was my CEO day. I was just taking care of things behind the scenes. Um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you can pick a theme that actually makes sense for you. If you're running a business, it's probably creating content. Content is king. You need lots of content. So I would use this day to actually write content and repurpose it. Um, you can pick whatever theme you want, though. Like if you want to build a website, maybe you know Tuesdays are website day. And you know, hey, every Tuesday, I have one hour or however long the time is to put towards building a website. If I get stressed out later in the week because I'm thinking about building this website, I'm just going to put it on the list and know that I'm going to get to it next Tuesday. So my days would be creating content. Uh, I would have a podcasting day and then I would have a, a client day. That's typically what I would cycle through. Again, if you don't have a business, you could have like a personal day. Uh, Maybe it's a do something outside the house day. Like think of the things that you actually want to accomplish. Now, I will say Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, my style, I would say is more put together because I have to show up, right? So, I mean, if it's content day, you could still go with this like athleisure wear. But when I'm recording podcasts or I'm working with clients, I very rarely am in sweatpants because when I like I have jeans and a sweater on today or I'll wear like my branded colors, like I want to feel good. You know, I'm sitting in my office and no one else is seeing me but them. Like I want to feel put together knowing that I'm getting the right things done. Um, so that's really the whole concept of the theme days is picking what you need to do. So right now my theme days are CEO day, Tuesday is content day, Wednesday is podcast day, Thursday is client day. So I will group all my client stuff together. And then I like to do another CEO day on Fridays where I can just regroup and reflect on the week. 
Now, when I was working full time, I would typically do a second content day on Friday because I would need time to catch up. But it's really nice because it it makes it easy. It's like you wake up and you're like, oh, what's the theme today? I'm going to build my website today. I'm going to do as much as I can to build my website. And then I'm moving on. Um, The other piece to this strategy is I utilize weekends for, I call it simple strategic planning. So Saturdays, as an example, from let's just say six to eight in the morning, I'm working on a project. It can be whatever project you want. For me, it was more business related, like creating a course or designing our mastermind or whatever the thing is. But what I found is during the week, I didn't really have time to spend more than like 30 minutes here or an hour here. And if you don't have this like larger block of time, it's just really hard to see progress. So I make sure at least once a week that I have this creative block that's at least two hours. You can put it on whatever day you want. But the theory is, let's pretend you've got this big goal. You've got, you know, one hour a week, Monday through Friday, you've got your theme set up, you know what you're working on. And then you've got this two hour block where maybe you're designing a new capsule, or maybe you're planning your next vacation, or it's like something that's going to take some more like deep thought work that you can't just do in 15 minute increments. And then the last piece of the puzzle is Sunday planning for the next week. Yeah. My themes for the next week, I'll block out my time. I'll figure out when my creative time is. And so it adds up to about eight to 10 hours a week, but you have time, right? On your CEO days. So if you get overwhelmed, you can use those. Then you also have time for you know, planning and then working on those big projects. And so it's about eight to 10 hours a week, but it keeps it really, really simple. And I have found that consistency is where you start to see the momentum of what you want to work on. Yes, I love that. And as someone who used to not believe that like I could get something done, like really deep done in an hour, like even just 10 minutes a day, it's amazing, which essentially mm-hmm. was an hour, right? Um, mm-hmm. and then it's amazing what you can actually get done if you have that de- dedicated space. And then you're not, your brain isn't taking up any space thinking about all of those things. Yes. Really quick, because I want to get into your head a little bit. Um, yeah. Do you still loosely, like Holly today, successful business owner, fast forward to going into 2024, do you still follow those roughly the same? Like is Monday still kind of this no yeah. calls create day for you? Yeah, I follow it to a T. I mean, now I have more time than an hour, but I have a theme every single day. Um, I love themes. It just it's just easier on my brain. Like I'm like, okay, today's podcast day. I gotta get dressed. I gotta show up. I gotta be in it to win it. Like the podcast drives a lot of things for us. Like today's the day to show up. Um, one thing that I have learned though is in this can be in any like phase, is if I have a really busy day or sort of like super creative work the next day needs to be like kind of a different theme. Like I feel like my brain needs like some time to like flip it. So like if I'm doing a lot of talking today, tomorrow I'll do, I'll have a content day where it's like more behind the scenes and I don't have to like show up on Zoom. And so that sort of helps balance things out. But I follow this to a T. Uh, It's easy for me. It keeps it really simple. I always say consistency trumps talent. Like you don't have to be the best in the game. You just stay in it. And like this truly helps me stay in the game. Because I'm like, all I have to do today is worry about podcasting. That's it. Tomorrow, I'm going to worry about whatever the theme is going. I love that. So I want to peel back the layer a little bit now that we talked about CEO week and everything like this. So I think that our style is directly connected to how we feel, how we show up, our productivity. But at the like the real full pull, pulled back layer is like a self, our self worth, right? Like yeah. how we perceive ourselves, our confidence levels, and all these different things. So I want to get into that a little bit. I know that you have a lot of self worth or self care practices that you use to make sure that you're super consistent in your business. Because I consistency, I think is. I think some of us are natural at it, but I also think it's a muscle, right? Because even the most consistent person can get burned out. And I think from those amazing things, you already 
said so many things that lit my stylist's heart on fire <laughs> when you were like, so on Mondays, like I have my cute leggings and my statement accessories. And I love that you said that because that's like the number one question I get from people all the time. They're like, I don't know how to be casual and feel put together. And it's always the accessories. It's like, you can wear a really cute sweatsuit. No one's saying that you can't. It's just like, how, what are those statement accessories that you're wearing? So I wanted to peel it back a little bit. So you just kind of said like, I have on days and then kind of these quieter days. So when you have those quieter days, what energy, like I want to get real into it here. Like what energy do you feel like you're pulling on? Like what side of Holly do you feel like you have to tap into? And are you starting to notice patterns? Like, is there a certain hat that you wear and why? Is there a certain yeah. sweater that makes you feel a certain way and why? Yeah. Well, it's really interesting because, uh, well, my, I used to joke that like my dream was, I just wanted to be like an athleta model. Like, I'm like, I just want to wear all their clothes all the time. Like I am not super fancy. And so like my go-to style in my corporate job was jeans and a blazer. Like to me, that felt really comfortable because it was like a little bit fancy, but like still more definitely my style. Um, I've been really into hats lately. And I think that's because I could never wear them before. Mm -hmm. Um, so I love like a good like black hat, like subtle, like I'm not like super blingy with, I'm obsessed with um, New Balance tennis shoes right now. They yes. have so many like fun. My husband's like, how many tennis shoes do you need? <laughs> like, well, you know, you got to have like the leopard ones and the blue ones and the red one. Like, so I've been really leaning into that. So Mondays and Fridays, that's typically what you'll see me in, like a really cute hat, leggings. Um, I try to make the top a little fancier, but it's definitely sort of that like athleisure look. Um, but one of the other things that you mentioned is, so I can't remember who said this, but it, I say it all the time in my stories and that's like, feel better, do better. Mm-hmm. So like, even though I don't want to work out in the morning, I do because like today is podcasting day. I'm like, I'm going to work out. I'm going to feel better if I just do better. Like if I just get my body moving, I'm going to feel better. And so I have this rule that like, at least once a week, I have to wear pants that button. Yeah. I'm like, you just, I mean, you could just like really let yourself go and I just, I feel more put together when I have like actual I, I'm super tall, so I love the whole the new that the flares are back. Yes. Um, so flares are really fun for me. I also love um they're like high-waisted capri flares. Mm-hmm. Again, I'm tall, so like capris look weird on me sometimes, but the flares are really fun. So I usually wear that with like, I don't know, I'm I really like graphic tees and just something. Uh, I will say on my podcasting days, I, we were just talking about this before. I have this like really um, flowery like backdrop behind me. And like, I so I can't wear crazy shirts. And so I try to actually wear my brand colors on the days that I do podcasting because I will film reels or videos or whatever because I'm in my brand colors. I'm typically dressed. And so I can like batch content. Um, and I like my brand colors. I'm, I, everyone says like, how do you, how do you choose brand colors? Like, yeah, I was like, can we it? talk about that? Let's talk about like yes. the synergy <laughs> behind them and why you chose them. Cause there's so much of color psychology between like the colors and everyone has these really fascinating stories around why they chose it, whether it was like, I didn't choose it <laughs> or it yeah. means this. And like, cause I don't know if people realize like my brand colors are black and white, which is like, when I think of like the original Vogue's being in black and white and then shades of my favorite lipstick colors. But like, unless I'm saying that, like no one knows. So I'd love to hear your brand color story. Well, I don't have a brand color story. I just randomly chose them, but I chose them well because they're colors that I like. Um, and if you go into my closet, like I wear a lot of blues and pinks and teals. Yellow is like my accent color. Um, and it's basically what's in my closet. So I picked well, I like them, but I I don't have a fancy story. I should have done something. The interesting thing is, is like, after I had more of an established brand, I did the like 
quiz of like, what does each color mean? And it actually yes. does match my personality. So I was like, okay, we're okay. <laughs> I was going to say your brand colors are perfect. Cause like the blue is really calming and the pink is kind of like that playful, easy energy. Yeah. And then I love that yellow is like your action color. Cause that's like the bright, get it done, sunshine energy. So it yeah. Makes sense. yeah. But I think again, like going back to CEO week, it's just, people are always like, Oh, that sounds so great, but it's really I can't do that. Literally, we'll take you 30 minutes to sit down and write, hey, here are my themes for this week. I really want to do these four things. So I'm just going to focus on those for a day. And then ask yourself, like, well, how do you want to feel? Yes. Like if you want to show up and build a podcast, but you're sitting in like holy sweatpants, it's probably not going to fly. But if you like got up and did a workout and got outside and then put on like, a bright yellow sweater and was like, okay, I'm here. Like, you're just going to feel better. And so that's what I've like tried to lean into because I mean, entrepreneurship is hard. <laughs> it's, yes. not, it's like probably the hardest job in the world. And if you can do little things to make you feel like you're successful, then it's automatically a win. And I think like feeling successful is going to make you successful. Absolutely. One of my um, clients, she uh, does a lot of personal branding and copywriting. And she always says that, well, before her and I started working together, she was always like personal branding is like professional self-care. And she was like, now Mm -hmm. I'm going to add style to that. She's like, it's like professional self-care. It's a thing that she uses to like boost her energy that day to like get through those things. And I feel like post pandemic, and I've been talking about this a lot, like the COVID clothing hangover and the fog, it's like. I don't, I think a lot of people discounted what that was because you said it. We were like, I've earned this. Yes. I mean, (laughs) I was excited. I'm like, I don't have to sit in traffic. I'm not going to shower today. I am like, so yes. And I think it's like the biggest life lesson, right? Is like any extreme in one direction is never really good. And as humans, we love to do that. Like we love to flip and flop. It's like, Oh, this sucks. So I'm going to go really hard this way. Yeah. That's amazing. And I love the way that you're talking about like using your brain colors and doing that and then having that leisure wear. And I think that's really powerful and really potent to get that intentional with not just the days, but like how we're dressing for those days. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be creating some looks and hooking everybody up with that in case. I'm so excited. I'm so excited because I feel like this with food. So like, I feel like I love theme days in my business and I love theme clothes, but, and then <laughs> someone's like, well, you should plan out your meals for the week. And I'm like, and that's where I stop. <laughs> yeah. You know, I do that too. I'm, I'm, I really am obsessed with themes. Like I believe to my core that it solves almost all problems. Uh, but we do the same thing with like meal planning. Like I keep it really simple. It's like, here's the, here's the thing. Uh, podcast days are usually tacos because they're simple. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And you get to look forward to them. Yeah. So good. you got to start recording on Tuesday so you can be taco Tuesday. I know. Right. I should. <laughs> it comes out on Tuesdays so we can celebrate podcast release day with tacos. <laughs> there you go. There you go. It's the same thing. Um, so speaking in the same vein, so we've talked about the CEO and we've really talked about the style and like how you drill in. And I love you said, right. Like, how do you want to feel? That's how I start every client conversation. I'm like, it's just like manifesting. Mm -hmm. It's just like everyone's like, how do you want to feel? Like start with that. So you've been talking lately around something that you're doing that I'm sure totally has everything to do with like, how do you want to feel? And I wanted to talk about that for a few minutes on the podcast before I let you go is tell me about you walking five miles a day, Holly. How is that making you amazing? Well, Going back to themes, I was like, I, so I quit my corporate job. It'll be almost two years. Um, and I was like, I don't want to sit in front of a computer all day. So I got to stick to my themes so that I can go do fun things. Cause I worked really hard to like have this time freedom and I am a workaholic. So it's really, I could, I could literally sit in front of a computer all day and I would be very happy doing it. Like it, work makes me happy. So my husband and I had this theme of like, hey, let's just go outside and walk 30 minutes a day just to get outside, you know, get some exercise. I'm not great at working out every day, but let's just let's just try it. So we did it this summer and it was it was fun. And then ourselves and did it like an hour a day. 
30 minutes here, 30 minutes there. And so the whole month of October, basically an hour of walking a day is essentially about five miles every single day. But let me tell you, talking about CEO week, it really forces you to plan your day because no one wants to walk an hour at seven o'clock at night or at six o'clock in the morning. So I had to be really intentional with, okay, well, what am I wearing? Because I need to be able to walk in the middle of the day. Are we walking? Because we have to do it together and we have to like match our schedules. And then like, how, how are we fitting it in? But it had this like really cool like effect that I didn't uh, really imagine. And that was it like impacted every other category of our life, right? So I'm I'm way more organized than I was the month before because I'm forcing myself to fit in this like extra hour of activity. Like we're now walking an hour together. So we're communicating this. So that helped long business meetings. Um, and then I... I started lifting weights. I started dressing different up to my call because I felt good. I was great. And so we've kept it up. We're, I mean, we're in our second month now. And yeah, I'm like, should we walk an hour and a half every day? Like, how much can we walk? <laughs> so. I love that. I tell my husband and I walk almost every single day too. And I always tell him, I was like, it's like spiritual. It's like this whole different yeah. experience. It's so funny because as a teenager, I remember like walking right before you could get your license and like walking and telling my friends, I am never going to walk anywhere ever again. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's been really fun, but it's really forced me to make sure our schedule is in order um, because if you miss a day, like the next day to make it up, it's like, it's really hard. So it's just it goes back to that consistency piece. Yes. You were the queen of... Thank you so much for coming on the podcast and dropping all your gems. If you guys haven't picked up, like Holly's the queen of ease and making it simple and creating the strategies to really set up your life to win, to be exactly like when people talk about like designing their lives. And I always talk about like styling my life, literally, not just with clothes. You have totally mastered that and you just do it with so much grace. So thanks so much for coming on the podcast. Yes. How can everybody find you? They need more Holly in their life. Yeah, well, I feel like we need to go take the CEO Week Challenge. Uh, it's totally free. It's five days. It's literally going to walk you through how to set up your own theme days based on what you have going on. So you can just go to hollymariehaines.com forward slash CEO Week. And the cool part is, is I'm behind the scenes. I'm answering questions. I will help you craft your CEO I'll add in this super fun um, themed capsule so you guys can feel your best while you're taking uh, the CEO Week Challenge. And I love all of this coming together. It's such a brilliant idea. And I think, you know, again, if you feel better, you're going to do better. Full schedule you can follow. I truly believe you'll see results. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks again, Holly. Um, I'm so grateful for you being on the show. Yeah, thank you so much.